Hello friends. Today in this video we are going to discuss chapter 7 of paper 1. So in this chapter basically we are going to discuss language. This is the only chapter which is related to linguistic anthropology. And hence you will find a question from this topic every year. So now the topics that we are going to discuss according to the syllabus is first is culture, language, communication where we will first talk about the nature. As far as the nature of culture, nature, origin of culture and characteristics of culture is concerned, we have a separate video known as 2.1, chapter 2.1, paper 1, where we have discussed everything about culture. And so the nature of culture is hung, then there are some origin of culture, characteristics of culture, etc. So here our main focus will be on language. So the topics that we are going to discuss uh, with respect to the language is nature of origin of language, uh, nature of language, origin of language, characteristics of language, verbal and non-verbal communication and social context of language use. So the, the video will start with the definition of culture which we already have done in the topic 2.1 but here we will just brush up the fact then we will talk about the nature of language origin of language characteristics of language and communication where we will focus on verbal and non-verbal communication and the last topic will be use of a language that is the social context of language okay so the first topic is nature of a language. A language is a system that consists of development, acquisition and maintenance and use of complex systems of communication, particularly the human ability to do so. The scientific study of language is called as linguistic. Linguistic. That is the particular study of language. There are three theoretical positions about the nature of language which are interactional interactional view second is communicative view third is the structural view structural view okay so when we are starting with the origin of language uh, nature of language first we'll just write down the definition of culture so there is a widely accepted definition given by E.B. Tyler we have discussed this definition two times one is under 2.1 second when we did anthropological theory and classical evolutionism where uh, we discussed about the contribution of E.B. Tyler to anthropology where we wrote down this definition that culture is a complex whole of knowledge, art, belief, customs, rituals, practices, morals and all other habits and capabilities which are acquired by human being as a member of society so this is the definition of culture which you will remember throughout our preparation okay so uh, here in this unit we will not talk much about culture because culture is just a topic where we have to touch it we have to touch it and we have basically touched it separately where we have these separate videos on origin nature and characteristics 
so just go and watch the video there so there's no need of duplication of efforts here so when we talk about the nature of language the study of language is called as linguistic and language is a system that consists of development acquisition and maintenance of use of complex systems of communication now uh, there are theoretically three positions about the nature of language the first is structural view communicative view and interactive view so we'll start with interactive view so this view of language sees language as a means of establishment and maintaining interpersonal relation interpersonal relation meaning that the interactive uh, interactive interactional view is basically uh, sees language as a means of establishing interpersonal relationship among human being and it is important for the social intercourse that is what we call it as the social transactions now the area of research in this context include interact okay area of research it include interactional analysis interactional analysis and conversational analysis conversational analysis the object of learning in this area of research is to understand how people initiate and maintain conversation with each other so the basic idea is to see that how people start communication they how they maintain the conversation with each other so that is basically the interactional view second is communicational view so language is a vehicle for expression language is a vehicle for expression of thoughts and belief with a certain meaning with certain meaning this perspective lays more emphasis on semantic and communicative dimension of language than grammatical and structural characteristics so the area ya pe kya hota hai na ki jo importance hota hai the major importance it is given on semantics or communicative dimension that how one person is able to communicate with the other person but at the same time the more focus is on communicative aspect how he is communicating okay that how this particular aspect that is how he is communicating will do in non verbal non verbal topic okay because as far as the verbal communication is concerned we know what verbal communication is the main focus is uh, here is non verbal communication now the area of research area of research includes socio linguistic socio linguistics semantics pragmatic etc the objective of language study is to learn expressive communication and in the last the objective is objective is to learn the expressive communication to learn expressive communication okay now the third is structural view here it sees language as a system of structurally related element structurally related element that is language is according to the structural view these elements are usually described as phonological 
that is then grammatical units phonological units then grammatical operation etc this is a pure linguistic treatment of language that constitute understanding of various structural aspect of a language now the focus here is on the target of language learning under structural perspective is a, the mastery of element of language system so this is all about the nature of language there are three views interactional communicative and structural and we'll fill up these three with certain fodder and we will complete the answer when it comes to nature the second is of origin so there are various disputed origin uh, origin of languages uh, theory and we will talk about them in brief so the first is of divine hypothesis divine hypothesis so according to it it is a gift of god to human gift of god to human okay uh in this adam and eve the first male and female or first of all the living creature they name uh, every as uh, other things in this in moment or they are the people who named everything this is according to the div divine hypothesis second is of natural evolution hypothesis natural evolution hypothesis third here uh, basically in natural uh, evolution hypothesis we will write down certain things which are in the evolutionary development as we see that the around 1200 cc plus was the cranial capacity of the earlier men or human being or we see them as our ancestors okay so that definitely had a certain type of uh, sophistication in the brain which helped them in language invention and learning possibilities as soon as the man developed the biological and neurological capacity for creative language there are certain natural evolution hypothesis okay for example noam chomsky noam chomsky he gave an innate language hypothesis so what is this we'll study later in this part now hypothesis that concerns how human have devised the first language so basically this hypothesis says that how human might have devised or started the use of first first is imitation hypothesis second is necessary hypothesis as far as imitation and uh, hypothesis is concerned there are various sub uh, things which are first is ding dong the ding dong hypothesis we'll write down each one of them okay so that we can discuss separate uh, them in one particular go second is pu pa hypothesis third is bo wo hypothesis the fourth is tata hypothesis and 
there is creole language hypothesis in the necessary hypothesis first is warning second is ye he ho hypothesis and the third is the lying hypothesis as per as the ding dong hypothesis is concerned the name uh, after the sound which was associated with uh, the object for example crash is the word for thunder then boom for explosion these were certain examples that they cited for ding dong hypothesis the pupa hypothesis the first word come from involuntary uh, involuntary and uh, exclamatory sentence for example related to dislike hunger pain and pleasure for example uh, ouch this comes after pain or discomfort so that is the pupa hypothesis now bobo hypothesis it is basically a vocabulary developed from animal noises animal noises you must have heard dogs barking in this video only so this is nothing but the bovo hypothesis that uh, the people uh, sorry the animal which will make that type of voice or noise will be given that type of name for example bark hiss and meow meow for cow hiss for snake and bark for dog the next is tata hypothesis this is basically a gestures okay so <coughs> the organ of speech were used to initiate gesture of hand gesture of hand and then tata means tata bye bye that type of gestural hypothesis came then creole language Th that is similarities between grammars of creole language throughout the world that this is the similarity next is necessary hypothesis this where imitation hypothesis now necessary hypothesis so first is warning warning hypothesis is basically for the signals those were used for example sher aaya bhago bhago sher aaya so sher is something used as warning so that is what second was yo hai ho so this is like jor laga ke haisha jor laga ke haisha so basically this is about the cooperative efforts of human being cooperative efforts of human being and necessarily it is the and the necessity is the mother of invention that is what is said here now lie, lying hypothesis the lying hypothesis says that whatever you have to convey to the people or the person you can convey by your emotion your eyes your thoughts only language is needed when you are lying when you are lying when a person is lying language is needed so this is basically the third theory regarding the origin of language now the third point here is characteristics characteristics of language so dsp and ias so you remember this two words when it comes to characteristics now we'll write down certain thing <coughs> okay now dsp d stand for dynamic s stand for sociolect p stand for productivity i stand for idolect e stand for auditory channel f 
S stand for again there is social act we have done this is symbolic and arbitrary symbolic and arbitrary also S stand for system okay so these are basically certain part in system the language the characteristics of language is further divided into grammatical unit then grammatical operation and third is lexicon element excuse me now when the language is basically dynamic in nature it means that it is constantly changing rather than we say it's constantly evolving that is both in meaning and words where are adding to the language and hence language is basically dynamic second is social act that is social variation with respect to social classes or occupational classes so this is social act means a person belonging to a particular strata of society will have this time type of his accent or his use of words which is which will call it as social act then productivity this is the ability to create a new message by combining existing uh, science for example but uh, i'm pathetic at drawing so consider this is b and this is leaf and it becomes belief okay so this is a certain type of productivity which language possess then ideolect that is individual variation that is variation in voice clarity pitch Uh, speech etc this will come under ideolect as far as auditory channel is concerned we see that the spoken language is produced in vocal tract vocal tract here you will write down individual variation so the auditory channel that is in vocal tract and transmitted as sound where sign language is produced with hand and transmitted by light so this is basically comes under the audio uh, auditory channel now this symbolic and arbitrary you see language even if we talk about indus valley civilization the language is basically used of various signs and symbols and hence it becomes difficult to decipher the language and hence it becomes arbitrary because we do not know what that particular sign means for example this is a swastika it has been found in indus valley civilization but we do not know what this particular sign this particular sign mean so this is basically nothing but arbitrariness of it okay so language is made up of grammatical unit grammatical operations and lexicon element okay so basically these were the characteristics of language now communication there are two types of communication verbal and non verbal communication as per as verbal communication is concerned we understand it we have developed it in the form of language so everything of the language that is nature origin and characteristics are concerned these are applicable to verbal communication okay so anything if comes related to verbal communication you just simply write down language okay then its nature origin and characteristics in brief now the main focus here is on non verbal communication um, according to one of the 
origin origin of language hypothesis we and uh, we came across the lying hypothesis okay where the voluntary communication must have to be invented for the purpose of lying and deceiving because whatever a person has to convey he can convey by his emotions by his eyes that is what they believe but they say that the real emotions are involuntarily expressed and for voluntary expression there is need of words there is need of words to deceive and lying and hence the communication which is non verbal in nature is important because you see that non verbal communication we can say no uh, we can hurt someone without even saying something or just by doing certain acts this doing certain acts comes uh, comes under non verbal communication all right now we'll write down about the non verbal communication as we all know that from our experiences that spoken words do not communicate all that we uh, we know about the social situation we usually say that uh, i am not able to express myself or i am unable to express it in words these are certain feelings that i cannot explain right so these particular feelings come under non verbal communication and our communication is not limited to spoken words and hence it is important uh, for the non verbal communication because this non verbal communication is usually understood as a process of communication this is a process of communication through which sending receiving of wordless messages uh sorry wordless messages okay wordless messages takes place for example you must have noticed that if a child is not behaving properly mother or father will show uh, him or her this you know big eyes and the child will go inside so that is nothing but a non verbal communication where father or mother do not have to speak a word okay but at the same time the child understood that if he do not behave well then that will be a situation for him which he do not want or at the same time this non verbal communication can be uh, done through sensory channel okay sensory channel for example sight that is what we talked about okay then sound we may sound uh, sweet to people that we like we sound normal to the people we don't know but we definitely do not sound normal or sweet to the people we hate there is basically a kind of thing which comes in our voice that yes i hate this person so much so that basically comes from sound the next is smell uh, you must have noticed this thing that whenever you are with your friends casual friends uh, for playing or anything you do, will not wear any per perfume or deodorant but when you on date or uh, with certain people that you want to be around you will definitely be wearing perfumes so that is what the basically smell is smell is to attract people and then there is taste for example if everything is cool in house you will see that the food taste wonderful but at the same time you will notice if there is something uh, that has happened then there will be uh, some instances where uh, food will be little uh, namak zyada ho gaya tikha zyada ho gaya that particular part will come under the taste that by non verbal communication the person who is cooking will communicate her or his grievance to the person who is eating so that comes under non verbal communication now there are types of non verbal communication so under the types of non verbal communication clothing and bodily characteristics B bodily characteristics are one of the way to express the non verbal communication for example physic 
here height skin color weight order and gender as far as the physic is concerned we will try to we in the sense people will try to be in shape just because they want to be at basically the two reasons first they want to be at the center of attraction second they they really care about the physical status so this is important okay so we do it that is non-verbal communication second hairs for example if we are going to if um, this is not applicable for men as such because uh, the hairstyle is basically same even when they get up in the bed or at the marriage but talk about a girl or a female so they'll have a definite type of pattern of their hairs when they'll go to a function rather when they'll be at home so this comes under their non-verbal communication then height the way uh, females use heels that will come under here then skin color we say uh, this is very prevalent in India that uh, people say that Are, ye kala hai. this to kala hai. Isko thoda ghaso, isko gora karo. So that basically comes under skin color when people uh, they try, tend to go outside they'll put powder on their face or talcum powder etc will put on their face just to look bright so that is a way of non-verbal communication that I also look good see even that is basically comes under skin color then weight and order okay order we have talked about that is the fragrance and gender okay so these are certain types of communication next is proximity proximity so this proximity means that if we know a person we like a person we tend to be closer to the person okay but if there is person that we hit then there is definitely this type of distance between the people so this is the proximity second is movement of body movement of body or body position if a person is sitting on the uh, basically a dice and there are two people okay here and here sitting on chair okay so you will see that uh, female or male they'll tend to move forward or lean forward towards the people if they both are uh, someone who are liking each other or if there uh, these are here then that means that there is certain element of either neutral or dislike so that is the body part okay our posture the way we sit the way we look at the person okay that comes under proximately proximity we don't uh, 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 pardon me that comes under movement we do not look at the people person in directly into the eye if we have done something wrong or we also do not do uh, this type of eye gaze with the people we hate so this comes under the movement next is para language para language is voice set voice quality and vocalization so the people when you go at someone's place and the people sound sarcastic that is a time when you basically should leave because that they are saying it by para language that we are not happy to see you they'll definitely sound sarcastic sarcastic okay and you'll understand that if you look at closer that you are definitely unwanted there the next is sign symbols such as writing okay signs and symbols okay signs and symbols for example uh, red for the stop green for go this will be certain signs and symbol see silence is a example of non-verbal communication with reflect both companionship as well as unfriendliness you will be silent on the issues or with the people that you do not like you will tend not to speak with them or at the same time you will also be silent when you will have fight with the person that you love so this silence is very dangerous 
because this shows both companionship companionship as well as unfriendliness or unlike oh, pardon me unfriendliness and dislike unfriendliness and dislike comes under silence now you see that universal nonverbal communication is basically there are certain facts of nonverbal communication which are universal okay for example facial expression for happiness anger sad this will be similar even if you are in any continent africa india africa uh, asia uh, america north south both or europe you'll find that this happiness people laugh when people sad were sad they cry so this is nothing but the universal non verbal communication then there are cultural variability their cultural variability for example uh, in northern north india uh, if you were to say yes so you will do your uh, head up and down nod okay so that is yes but that is no in different type of culture for example in south you will do your head right to left right if you have to say yes so basically this is the cultural variation if you come to maharashtra you will do up and down nod for yes you will also do side by side nod when you understand something and you say yes so it becomes very difficult for understanding that what person is and hence you have to understand that these are the non cultural uh, non uh, verbal communication ways the next is the kinetics kinesis so kinesics it is a study of communication by non verbal mean non verbal mean and to conclude we can say that the non verbal communication is equally important non verbally verbal communication is equally important for verbal communication and the way it has in cultural significance the last topic for the chapter 7 language is the use of language or basically the context the context of language use is the exact point now s s p again one s and c c 3 s 2 c 1 p s p college is a famous college in pune where there are 3 s 2 c 1 free so sp college in pune is famous college okay so you remember that 3 s 2 c 1 p so language can be can only be developed in social setting and human society could be maintained only among people speaking and understanding the common language language is transmitted culturally that is it is learned language do not transfer genetically okay that is the characteristics of culture similar characteristics of language that language and culture do not transfer genetically they are uh, we we try to uh, get it from the means of culture and from our surrounding or it is culturally transmitted to us now there are spc sp college okay these are certain social use first is socio linguistic second s is speech third s is social network p is basically prestige c stand for class difference and other c stand for class aspiration 
if we talk about socio linguistic you will find that the study of effects of all and all aspect of society including cultural norms expectations on the way of language is used according to ethnicity gender level of education the language differs that is basically here we are talking about the social class that socio uh, linguistics they'll be differing from the ethnicity for example tamil english north indian english british english american english so this will basically even african english they'll have a different uh, type of accent so this is nothing but the ethnicity general level of education etc this will have a definite impact on a language the second is speech the speech community see the group of people use language in a unique and mutually accepted way for example if doctor doctors will use certain terminology which a doctor can understand okay even the handwriting is something where only pharmacist can understand that's the other part here as far as the doctors are concerned they'll use certain types of specific wordings okay this specific word in wordings will be understood by the people of the same profession and hence the speech then second is social network okay that is social network is basically office or factory office or factory how people choose to behave to talk here is basically comes under the social network when it comes to prestige there are certain speech habits which are assigned positive and negative values the way one speak for example if a person is speaking a dialect of language which is a kind of very uh, shown and valued that will come under the prestige positive and there will be certain way if you speak in that way that will be considered as to be negative and there will be an impact on this particular section that is prestige then class differences you'll see that class and occupation are very important for uh, as a marker for linguistic linguistics okay so people from upper strata of society and lower strata they'll speak different the accent will be different the words will be different uh, the way they speak will be different that is basically comes under class difference and class aspiration is basically the hypo correction hyper correction or over correction what happen in this scenario is that that people uh, from this particular uh, type from particularly lower uh, strata of the society they try to imitate the higher strata in the form of sanskritization okay sanskritization uh, is the concept of mn shrinivas we have a separate video and you should go and watch it first so what people do they try to imitate the way upper class speak they try to behave the way upper class behave now while speaking and behaving they understand they realize uh, that they have to speak in that way they have to behave in that way but at the same time they could not understand the limit of their behavior and they tend to hyper correct themselves there is one thing is correction for example uh, thesaurus thesaurus is basically not a dinosaur here it is a, a dictionary where if you want to use a sophisticated word you can use a thesaurus then applying thesaurus on certain words will make you make your letter impactful but if you use thesaurus on each and every word you will not look smart you will definitely look stupid because that will make no sense and that is that comes under class aspiration and hyper correction so this was all for the linguistic anthropology and the topic language chapter 7 was concerned i would request you people to like subscribe to this particular channel thank you so much have a great time ahead